Happy Easter everyone, and today I have something very special I want to show to you. Unprecedented, real lighting, colour, materials, everything in this episode. We've got a brown bunny and an even more brown egg, and we've also got a lighting source, a light, a positional light. Now what I can actually uh, what I can actually do is change the position of the light by pressing G on my keyboard. So there you go. You can see this is no trickery. It's actually like light. So let's dive right into the code and see how I did this. No. Oh, mouse, you're being irritating today. Okay. So the first thing I did was I created another display list for the egg can see here egg display list and I load the egg crack model because there is also kind of a crack in the egg <laughs> and then of course I draw the egg and what I've done is I've added the gel color 3f met method call before the gel begin triangles call on both the egg display list and the object display list and I've also went and enabled gel color material and gel color material, gel front, gel diffuse. Now what this will actually allow me to do is change the color of an object, a material, in a way that the lighting system in OpenGL understands this and uses it. Now for the actual lighting, I first went with gel shade model smooth, so this basically smooths out the normals of the object, so the lighting appears more organic I guess you could say and then I did GL enable GL lighting which is the base call for all OpenGL fixed function pipeline lighting and then what I did is I called GL enable GL light zero which enables the light zero of OpenGL to be drawn so there are basically eight different lights GL light zero up to eight or seven so those are the eight different lights you can use and these function as handles you could say and then I call GL light model, GL light model ambient and then as float buffer and this is actually a convenience method I've created here and what it does is it takes an array of floats and then creates a float buffer, stores it in it, flips the buffer and returns the buffer that's all there is to it and instead, so instead of saying float buffer buffer is buffer utils create float buffer and then adding the values by putting them into the buffer and then flipping the buffer and then using the buffer, I can simply call one method. That's all I have to do here. So I do this as float buffer new float array and then these four values stand for the ambient light. Now what ambient light is is light that's there regardless of the situation, regardless if there are lights or not. So even when the lights are turned off, there is still ambient light. Now this red, green, blue, you might think it's for colors, but it's actually for a thing we call intensity. Now it very much resembles the colors, but basically you can go over the one border and then say if you have two red, then it's very intensely red as ambient model. I'll show that to you right now, actually. Let's say... I would have a lot of red, so do 5 red. Now everything would be extremely red. Uh, there we go. Everything is extremely red, just as I said. And regardless of the lights, of course. So then we call GL light, and this is a method which um, might be familiar. <laughs> Um, so the first parameter is the handle to the light, and this is GL light zero because it's the the same light we enabled and the same light that we're going to use throughout the entire program. It's actually the only light which we're going to use throughout the entire program. Now the second parameter is the type of parameter. So in this case, I say GL diffuse for the color of the light. But you can also do GL position for the position of the light and some other th things I'm not going to cover right now. 
and then I call as float buffer and same here with the intensities of the colors this is just a very bright white light you can see I can also turn down the intensity so it will be a very dark environment like this So you can see it's very dark now, and that's because I've turned down the intensity. And then I do GL enable call face, which has nothing to do with lighting at all. But um, I think I've explained this before. I'm going to explain it again anyway. So culling is an open GL technique, which allows you to discard a face of an object, the front or the back face of an object. Now, when you load models from Blender, they usually come with a front and a back side. That's what triangles come with too. So culling enables you to disregard one of these faces. So I enable GL cull face and then I say GL cull face GL back. So I never draw any of the back sides of the object. Now, if I were to remove this statement, I could actually go into the bunny and still see the inside of the bunny. this. It's actually really weird, but no, this is possible. And then I do this color material stuff. And I also happen to initialize shaders in this program, but I don't use them. Like I can use them, I have the option to, but for now I'm just going to cover the fixed function OpenGL pipeline. So the depreciated one. <laughs> The simple one. Now that we're done with the display lists and the enabling of stuff, let's go and see what else we can find. Hmm. So, yeah, this is about object placement. Let me just make this not full screen anymore. <laughs> till the f till uh, turn the full screen feature off. So there we go. Now it's no longer full screen, and first I draw the bunny, which is the object display list, and then I do GL push matrix, and after that GL pop matrix, and in between I say GL translate F. Now I've probably explained this before, but you might be a bit confused on how this works, so I'm going to explain it again. GL push matrix stores the settings of the current matrix and kind of takes it or the current configuration you could say, the current translation of coordinates and then it uses that and every time you translate a coordinate now it pushes it to or it puts it on the current matrix and then when you say GL pop matrix it disregards all the GL translate F or GL rotate F or GL mult matrix function calls you've, uh, you've done between these push matrix and pop matrix calls here and it goes back to what it was before the GL push matrix call so what I can do is translate something and not have to worry about this translation later down the road say here so I can do GL translate F minus 5.5 F minus 1.5 F and 3.5 F and this moves um, the the translation of the object that's going to be drawn at 0, x, 0, y, 0, z, and it basically translates the origin to a point which is x minus 5.5, y minus 1.5, and z, or z, 3.5. And then I call the egg. So here I call gl light, gl light 0. GL position, as I said before, this is the other variant you might be using of GL light, and then as float buffer, and I call new float, and then I use the light position X, light position Y, and light position Z. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So again, this is how it looks. Great, you can move light sources around. I'm really proud of this, actually. Now just to show you the ambient light, which is always there, if you look very carefully you can actually see the silhouette of the rabbit, and that's not because there is light on it, because there isn't, 
Um, but that's because of the ambient light, which is there regardless of the light. Like if I put a light inside of the bunny, then you can't see it here, but you can still... Actually you can. Let's just not look at that part. <laughs> but you can still see the silhouette of the bunny and the ambient light. Okay. Now let's go into Blender and actually create that egg. So what I did was I added mesh, UV sphere, and let me see how did I do this. Go to edit mode. I am by no means good at Blender. <laughs> Just throwing that there. And then I took like this. Or just press A to deselect all and then select this. Press Ctrl R. Ah, there it is. Do it twice or three times and just create three rings here and then move this ring a bit inwards so now we have our egg and I can export it as an OBJ file in my project directory so that's how I did that Now this was the end of the lighting tutorial, I hope you enjoyed and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, tweet me at at coding universe, at coding universe or mail me at the coding universe at gmail.com. See you in the next video and bye.